All right, welcome back to the Fab Forms. It's been a while, kind of, on this style stuff. I'm trying to get in the shop. This may be one of the last episodes where I'll probably do maybe a couple more in this shop, but it's getting close. For those of you who are longtime viewers, very, very close. I got the floor coating stuff for the shop. Should happen maybe this week. I'll make a full video. Stay tuned. Enough about that. Figured. I don't really have time to work on the Bibster who I want to right now. I know that's what a lot of you guys are waiting on. But at least maybe I could do a little how-to, a little instructional video, a little something something for you guys on the English wheel. So, in this episode of the Fab Forms, we're going to do a little Kyle Voss version of the English wheel how-to, or how it works, or call it what you want, English wheel. This episode of the Fab Forms is brought to you by Metal Supermarkets, the convenience store for metal. Find a store near you by clicking the link in the description. So basically what I want to do is I don't want to get too in depth on uh, the English wheel. I just kind of want to show you the basics, how it's designed to work, the major components of it, and just kind of give you a way to wrap your head around what this thing does if you're not familiar. Some people, you know, a lot of people are familiar with this piece of equipment or this machine. Um, they maybe understand a little bit about what it does, but they may understand what the final product is that it makes, but not how it does it. And in my personal opinion, any tool, doesn't matter what it is, bead roller, planisher, English wheel, it's one of those things, if you can kind of understand, if you can wrap your head totally around what it does, you can make anything. You don't need to know how to make it. If you understand what this thing does in its full full capacity, you can make anything. Because you understand what it is you need to do to get your end product, your desired product in the end. So that's the idea. I kind of show you uh, very basically what it does, what its purpose, how it works, and that will allow you to make whatever it is you want in the future if you ever decide to purchase one of these. So basically all this is is a metal ace machine. This is one of their older metal ace English wheels. Uh, you can find these at tricktools.com. They make this one. They make one that's a little bit shorter. And every English wheel really kind of has the same characteristics, right? It's got a throat depth, which is how deep this is. That's how deep the material is that you can fit in here. When you're wheeling, say it's a big fender, the deeper this is, the bigger piece you can fit in here. This particular one is a 44 inch. I think they make one a little bit smaller, like a 36 inch. And in my personal opinion, most people could do without this amount of depth. Um, I was, this was just what was available to me when I bought one, and so this is what I bought. I didn't really feel like I needed this much depth. Obviously, it's an advantage because if I ever do need it, I've got it. All right, so the depth is very important for the amount of material you can fit in here. That's probably like one of the structure itself um, and how sturdy it keeps these, these two uh, rollers is very important. So usually when you pay up for some kind of uh, English wheel, what you're paying for is the structure that holds these wheels and then the wheels themselves. So the materials the wheels are made out of, how smooth the surfaces are, and then the structure that's around it, how true these wheels roll independent of each other. Uh, if there's any kind of deflection or movement, it could affect the way that thing rolls, or if there's not enough clamping force between the two wheels, then you're not gonna get the desired product or the desired uh, performance that you may want. So, always every English wheel has a flat upper wheel and then a contoured lower die. Uh, so you can pop these out. Obviously you can see that this thing has a contour to it. You can change these out for whatever contour you want. So if you need something that's a little more aggressive, you can go with that. All the way to basically doing something flat. And everything in between. The way that you want to judge basically contour 
is really based on the surface that you're trying to bend. So something that's flatter, you're not gonna necessarily want this because you have less contact patch in the middle. It's gonna do less work for every time you roll it. Uh, you'd want something that's got a little less contour, more contact patch. You're gonna get more work done faster. And if you don't need it to be round or if the panel is not already round, then you would go something, something like this. If the panel is already round, then you'd have to go with something like that. Makes sense, right? All right, so, so far we've got frame structure. The stiffer the frame structure, the truer these dies are gonna run independent of each other. Uh, you run into some challenges because the deeper that this frame is, it's a little harder to get it structured properly and that's where you really, when you pay up for one of these, that's what you're paying for. It's a good frame structure. It's gonna keep these running uh, true, independent of each other, as well as a good squeeze. So that brings us to the third thing that this thing really does, and that is squeeze. Now at the bottom here, it's got a foot adjuster. All it is is basically uh, a threaded rod within this, and as you spin it, it'll bring this die up or down compared to this die here. So depending on the thickness of material you're using or what you're trying to achieve with it, you can tighten or loosen that bottom bottom adjustment and it's gonna give you the squeeze that you need right in here between the dies, which in turn squeezes the material because ultimately all this thing does, if you wanna make it in ultra simplistic terms, all this thing does is squeeze metal, aluminum, whatever material you're English wheeling, all it does is squeeze it. All it does is take it from its original form and makes it a little bit thinner. It's just thinning that material as you run it through there. That's it. That's all this does. Super simple. Now, if I had to guess what you're most familiar with on the English wheel is probably like uh, making gas tanks for, for motorcycles or maybe some fenders. That's kind of the most popular um, on TV type of thing that has been done with these in the last decade, I guess. These things have been used forever though to make cars. You know, a lot of the guys that made the original Jaguars and those exotic cars way back in the day, this is what they did it with. This was really used um, in the military in like World War II to make a lot of those, to shape a lot of those panels before they had heavy duty stamping. And really you make contoured pieces just like this. So you can see this piece is very contoured and it kind of has, you know, a motorcycle gas tank-ish kind of feel to it. Now this one has been planished, which I'll go over in another video. We're gonna hold, do a whole video just similar to this one on planishing. This one has been planished. It's kind of why it has maybe a little bit different texture. Um, almost looks like hammered, which is basically what a planisher does. Planisher is very similar to an English wheel though in the fact that it, all it's doing is stretching metal. So this piece here, I basically created on the English wheel and you can see it has like a high dome in the center and that's just me playing around basically. But you'll notice that the finish is a little bit different. So if I can show you this on camera, you can actually see, see more of the wheel marks in it versus this one where it has like the hammer tone planish marks. Matter of fact, you probably see it better on the inside. Yeah, there you go. So you can see where that planisher is basically, every stroke that planisher made, you can see it on the inside here. Whereas this one, you don't see any marks like that. If you see anything, it's more of a wheel mark. And that is basically just because uh, I had too much tension on it. You can actually, actually loosen the tension on it and you won't see a lot of those marks on this panel. You can actually make it super smooth. Now let's talk about why it does what it does and kind of how to achieve that with the English wheel. All right, so for demonstration purposes, we've got piece, two pieces of aluminum here. I believe these are both 050, no. They're probably like 060. They're either 050 or 063 aluminum, just 3003 aluminum, nothing fancy, just sheet aluminum, just some stuff. I got uh, metal supermarkets. 
Got two pieces of scrap, basically, is what these are. And the way that an English wheel works is it stretches the metal. As you roll it through these dies, it'll stretch it. You know, you're rolling it this way, and a lot of people think that it stretches it um, lengthwise. So as you roll it, it kind of does the uh, dough. Like if you're rolling out dough, you know, most people think that it stretches it long ways, right, as you roll it. But that's not the case. Uh, the way that this thing works is it actually stretches it in every direction. So as you roll it through there, it's stretching it this way and it's stretching it this way at the same time, all right? And as you stretch those in every direction, this metal in the center gets longer and fatter. And because it gets longer and fatter, it has nowhere to go but up or down, depending on which way you have the panel, I guess. Um, the, the die is kind of help cheat that a little bit by having the, the bottom one round and the top one flat. So as you stretch all this metal, the outside surface itself doesn't go anywhere. The inside surface gets wider and fatter and it has nowhere to go but up. And the more you roll it and the thinner it gets, the more up it goes. And that's how you create those dome effects. Now one secret to this, just a little bit of lubrication. So you put a little WD-40 on both sides. Because it's stretching that metal, if you kind of got it lubed up a little bit, it allows it to kind of slide through those, those rollers and move like, it, like you're, you're wanting it to. Plus it keeps your rollers nice and, nice and clean and free of scuffs. All right, now so all I've done is put a little bit of tension on this thing, and I'm just gonna roll the center of this. And what you wanna do is you wanna keep what a lot of guys refer to in the industry as like a frame. So this outer section, you don't want to roll. You don't wanna stretch this outer section. You want it to stay, you want it to keep its shape, and that's what's gonna allow the center to bow. So if you stretch the whole panel, then the whole panel will just get long and, and fat. But if you leave this outer section unstretched and you only stretch the center, that's when you get the popping effect. So I'm just gonna roll the center of this thing. Very quickly, you can see you can see the amount of movement that we're already starting to get in this panel. You can already see a dome effect this way. You can definitely see the dome effect that way. And you can also see you can kind of see those rolling marks, right? You can see where that thing's rolling over those and squeezing that. If we could measure this, if I cut it in half and we measured the thickness of the outside versus the thickness of the inside, you'd see that this is already thinner. Thinner by very, very little though. That's the thing that's amazing is it doesn't have to thin it much to make a huge difference. Uh, the difference between the outside and the inside is very minute, but just that little bit of stretch makes it pop.
All right, so there you go. You can kind of see how that works, uh, how fast it works. Now, the speed is really dependent on how much pressure you're putting on with the adjuster at the bottom. And really what you want to do is you can kind of start off fast initially, but as you go, you kind of want to try to be very slow in the amount of uh, wheeling you do, mainly for two things. How much curve you got, like you got to want to, you want to kind of creep up on what it is you're trying to achieve. Secondly, you don't want a bunch of rolling marks in there, right? You kind of want those marks to be smooth and gone. The other thing is, is the print that's on your panel. So you can kind of see these lines really dependent on how smooth your dies are. So my dies aren't that polished right now. If they were, this would actually show up as almost like a polished or a chrome finish. Like even though the aluminum itself is not started like that if this was chrome like polished this would look chrome like polished you're basically printing whatever it is you do on your panel so there you go there's standard english wheeling you can kind of get a curve both ways get a curve that way you get a curve that way it looks like you have more this way but the panel is just not wide enough if this thing was wider you would kind of see the same slope this way as you see this way now there is one other technique that i will show you that i have used on the channel before and that is using the rubber band so if you're doing like a trans tunnel or something that you don't necessarily want to curve both ways so like you just seen you know you can, you'll curve it this way and that way at the exact same time what if you don't want it this way what if you just want the curve to be this way Say you're going to do a trans tunnel or something where it's a long and you just want to roll it over. Well, you can do that with the English wheel and the way you do it is with a rubber band. So you can actually stretch this rubber band over the upper die. Think of it like this. So that lower die is kind of arced and the upper die is flat. And so if you put tension on it, it's basically just squeezing it and thinning this material. Well, this particular technique, you're not thinning the material. You're just kind of rounding it over that bottom die so that rubber up top is going to allow it to it's going to flex and squeeze into that rubber and it's going to allow that bottom die to kind of curve the bottom of it and the more you roll it through there the more your arc you're going to get you can kind of creep up on that arc and it's a way to get a very smooth roll that you couldn't normally get out of panels especially panels maybe that kind of have a different you know you can't a slip roll will kind of get it to you uh, putting you know six feet put a piece of aluminum in a slip roll unless you have a really big slip roll is not going to happen and even if you did that panel has to be perfectly flat to go in the slip roll but say you had something like the bibster where it's contoured up you could still get that contour in it even though it has a bend in it with an english wheel so like i said just got a rubber band this rubber band just stretches over this lower this upper die And all it's doing is giving you enough give where you're not stretching that panel, you're just curving it over this lower die. So, let's see what that looks like.
So there you go. Very quickly, you can kind of see how the thing's going to take shape. You can even see the roll marks on the bottom. One of the secrets to, to any English wheel work is to try to step these little roll marks in very slightly. Like you don't want to have one here and then one out here. If you can kind of stack those in there very close together, you're going to have a better uh, shape, a better pattern, and it's going to be much smoother. Obviously, sometimes it's hard to do, but let's see. So there you go, you can see how that works. Kind of puts an arc in it and it keeps that panel perfectly straight. Let's see if I can focus this thing. So you can see this way, the panel is not curved like this. I mean, it is kind of right at the end just because I didn't ever roll this, but if you look from like here to there, it's pretty straight versus that. So like I said, it's not stretching this, it's just curving it over that lower die. So there you go, two ways, the. English wheel works. Very simple ways. Try to give it to you guys in the simplest terms. How this thing works. Like I said, it's basically just thinning that metal. It's like a hammer. It rolls. Especially if you get your thumb in there. Like if you're rolling this thing and you jam a finger in there, it's like a it's like a hammer that hits your finger that did never release. Like it just stays on top of it. That's how it works basically. Like if you could take a hammer and you know, well, it's more like the planisher, I guess. We'll get into that later. But it's just thinning that metal. Very simply, not super complicated. Simplest terms, it's thinning the metal, stretching it, it's causing it to dome. Or if you have a rubber band on it, it's gonna cause it to curve. And if you know that, if you know how that works, you can make anything you want. The beauty of something like this is that you can creep up on panels. If you are just getting started, you can put very little tension on it. You can go very slow and you can kind of creep up on that shape that you want. Um, I would say that the downfall to one of these though is that they make equipment now that works much faster than an English wheel. So if you know what you're doing and you're trying to make products super fast or faster, this is probably not the machine for you. There's a lot of manual labor. This takes a lot of time. You know, nowadays they make the power hammers. And that sort of thing that go much faster they kind of do the same thing that this does but much faster so pros and cons to me this kind of has like some old world feel to it kind of puts some soul in your product you know if you just run it through a power hammer i guess it kind of does the same thing but there's just something about being one with the panel and actually kind of rolling each individual squeeze in that panel so there you go. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I hope that kind of helped maybe in some way or another. I will tell you this, don't be intimidated by one of these machines. If you feel like this is metal shaping is something you want to get into, go get you a machine. Doesn't matter if it's a cheap one, it may not work as good as the best ones out there, but it's gonna do the same thing, maybe just in a, a slower, in a more efficient way, I guess, or not as precise and you're not gonna get it as a precise finish or, or what have you, but you'll be able to create what it is you wanna create in the end. As always, thank you for joining me. See you guys some more this week. May do the planishing hammer tomorrow. Stay tuned.